Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Chinelo Anene, and I am joined by my amazing co anchors tonight, one in the studio and one via Zoom. Hi, Diola. <laughs> Hi, Unoma. Good evening. How are you ladies doing? Thank you. Ah, the holiday is ending today. Hi, How do you feel about that? Hi, Hi, Hi. Hi Noma. Okay, so the holiday ends today. Mm -hmm. We're back to reality. From Although, for me, I've not had a holiday per se. Oh. But yeah, the Lord is my strength. How are you doing? I can allude to that, Tinello. Right? It's, it, it's, uh, uh, holidays for me are just elusive because I'm still working. And um, we are not resting. Mm. So really, it's not a holiday. <laughs> In fact, it even brings some level of uh, not depression, but yeah. somehow you're, you're dampened spirits because you can't enjoy what others are experiencing. Mm. So yes, I feel you on that. Mm. <laughs> it is well. It is. Okay, so uh, tonight we're going to be having a very interesting conversation and um, achieving free, fair and credible elections in Nigeria remains challenging as every election is fraught with voter apathy, rigging, vote buying, voter suppression, violence among others. With the fragile state of our democracy, the role of the judiciary in resolving election disputes cannot be overemphasized. In alliance with Enough is Enough Nigeria would be comparing Nigeria's presidential election tribunal process to that of Kenya's. So, um, Dola, I guess you have some things to share with us tonight. Oh, yes. Um, okay, so, I mean, this is part of the um, campaign for politracy, you know, just to get um, more and more people involved in the process. And um, so, um, of course, on the backdrop of the election that just happened, um, there were lots of um, issues on, you know, all, all the sides of the divides and um, we're hearing talks around um, petitions and all that. But it's interesting to know that um, before you can even, you know, file a petition, you know, in Nigeria's mm -hmm. case, you know, it would take about 21 days, you know, from the declaration of the results by the Independent National Electoral Commission mm -hmm. as against Kenya's, which is seven days mm -hmm. once the result has been, you know, announced. And um, the second um, to compare is now, of course, when it goes to the tribunal, the tribunal courts can only render a verdict mm -hmm. like 180 days after you know the, the submission of the petition yeah. to determine a verdict from the first day of the petition was filed again in comparison to kenya's um a pre-trial conference will be held eight days yeah. from the date of filing the presidential election put petition and that's just that's so interesting. Which would even make sense because, I mean, sometimes you shouldn't allow it like... Yeah, for linger for long. too long because of all the, you know, emotions attached. You just want to quickly put back, you know, the country together on all sides of the divide and then just find a way to just move forward, yeah. you know. Okay, Unoma, I think Unoma has more information about that for us. Unoma, please go ahead. Yes, just to continue from where Diola stopped, we have... Uh, still uh, uh, in our comparison with Kenya, we have the fact that the verdict for Nigeria now, that yeah. the verdict of the Tribunal Court of Appeal can be appealed and determined at the Supreme Court within 60 days after the tribunal judgment, while in the case of Kenya, immediately after the pre-trial conference hearing of the petition, takes place in the Supreme Court, the decision of the court is pronounced 14 days from that day the petition was filed. And this is very interesting because it means that people can get answers speedily. Mm -hmm. Comparing it to Nigeria, again, the total petition has a life circle of 240 days, while the total petition uh, has a life circle of 21 days in Kenya. So once uh, a petition is filed, 21 days later, there would be, it would be a total submission of that petition 
and this will be done within 21 days. And I'm wondering why it is that we have to take this long. I think that's where in the judiciary we had issues because we cannot get judgment mm. passed as quickly as possible. As possible yes. And, you know, we have so many pending cases yeah. in, 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 in courts for so long. So a, a lot of people have even given up hope. And in the case of, of the, the, the political cases that are involved, it's going to take a period of time mm -hmm. to be able to get the verdict, which mm -hmm. will uh, may not even be as useful by the time it comes out because every other thing would have continued to go on and those who feel that they have not gotten justice that justice has not been served will 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 be many so yeah. this this is a plight of uh, nigerians compared to kenyans yeah. and um, it's something that we really need to look into in our judiciary system Hmm. Continuing from where you Noma know, you know, I like what she said about us looking into our judiciary yeah. system, right? We need to start to now build trust in judiciary yeah. because the truth is, a lot of people don't trust the judiciary at this point. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. we had that conversation sometime, I think two weeks or so ago on the show, and we asked, okay, so do we think that the judiciary is going to take, you know, be fair? And I said, I, I really can't, I really can't tell. But then we need to build trust in our judiciary. And how can we do this? The tribunal should be live streamed. That's right, the presidential tribunal. So what we should usually do is, I mean, it might be expensive, right, mm. for us to do a live, live stream and all of that. But then, or rather, the cost of TV airtime might be expensive. But then what, how about we explore a digital YouTube options. channel? Yes, yeah. so digital, digital media. And then we can, people would see, okay, this yeah. thing is happening live and direct. And mm -hmm. then even trust it better and so i really do hope that um the nigerian judiciary will look into this and uh, INEC as a whole as a matter of fact would um take necessary measures to ensure that these differences are yeah yeah, yeah looked yeah, upon yeah, yeah. let's not also forget the office to... no ma go ahead yeah sorry chinelo i quite agree with you because uh, the the judiciary at this point needs to show transparency. Yes, mm. a lot of people feel begrudged. A lot of people feel that they cannot trust the system, like you rightly said. Mm -hmm. So even more and more reason they have not to trust the system. So mm. I think the judiciary needs uh, some level of transparency to yeah. show that they are really working for the Nigerian people. Mm. 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 Okay, um, this information is coming from the Office of Citizen in Office Enough campaign. And let's not forget, we spoke about the chat board the other day. Yeah. You can yeah. know your elected officials, the governors, the senators, House of Reps, State mm. House of Assembly, local government chairman. And all you need to do to get started is to send hello via WhatsApp to 01700 Just send hello via WhatsApp to 01700 one. So let's dive right into our conversation for tonight. Here's what we found as today's quote. It doesn't matter when we start. It doesn't matter where we start. All that matters is that we start. And this is by Simon Sinek. Very well mm. said. It doesn't matter when, where. What matters is that you just start. get it done yeah right yeah, yeah. some are of the opinion that nigeria and perhaps the whole african continent lacks good leadership another school of thought believes that followers will fall in line when quality leadership is provided today we are discussing leadership and governance catching them young with honorable rafael ikui minu but first let's take a break to see what we found in the news You are still watching Ways. The International Day of Multilateralism and Diplomacy for Peace is celebrated annually on 24th of April. It seeks to reaffirm the UN Charter and its principles by resolving disputes among countries through peaceful means. The day acknowledges the use of multilateral decision making and diplomacy in achieving peaceful resolutions to conflicts amongst nations. It was established on the 12th of December 2018 through resolution ARES 7317 and was first observed on 24th of April 2019. I mean, this, this day literally speaks for itself already. Peace is all we need. I remember that story that you took about the Sudan. Yeah, yeah. I hear that they've called a truce. For the Eid Mubarak, the Eid um, the holiday. Eid I hope day. that after the Eid holiday, they don't go back. <laughs> they don't go back to it. Okay. Anyway, Norma, what did you find for us in the news today? Oh, I hate to be the bearer of 
bad news, but I did see some uh, very disturbing numbers today in the news where I saw Nigeria's indebtedness to World Bank now at nine, 6 trillion naira. So the story has it that Nigeria's borrowing from the World Bank has risen to 121.46% under the regime of the president, Major General Muhammad Buhari. And uh, this number owed the World Bank Group rose to 7.64 billion, which is about 352 trillion, using the exchange rates of the Central Bank of Nigeria, which brings it to, which is about 460.53 per dollar. As of April 23rd today, this is the highest is risen in seven years. And this uh, indebtedness to the United States, Washington, D.C. lender rose from 6.2 billion that dollars, which is 2.9 trillion naira, as of December 2015, came to about 6.42 trillion naira as of December 2022. And these numbers are very, very disturbing for me because if we're owning this much. I don't know. <laughs> the whole of Nigeria, I, I don't know. I don't know what the plight of Nigeria will be and what the intention is to repay this money. That means the government that is going to be coming in has a lot of work to do in this regard. I, I, I would just leave it there. I'll just leave it there, Chinelo. But these are very disturbing numbers. <laughs> Do you know why I'm even laughing? <laughs> so I saw eight tweets mm -hmm. where someone said, okay, so this is how much we owe World Bank. Let's divide it by the number of people. So that means everybody's owing 8,000 something there. I say, please send your account number. <laughs> Make I pay my own base now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's funny, but... Yeah. A joke out of everything. everything. Yeah, this, yeah. I think this, it's, this it's, is it's a coping mechanism. Disturbing. It's a coping mechanism. God help yeah. us. God help us. Diola, you're watching the news. Okay, so um, I, I remember that last week, you know, we were talking about um, Sudan. Mm -hmm. And um, we had mentioned that, um, you know, countries had started evacuating people. Yeah. And we had also gone further to say that um, we hope that um, the Nigerian government, you know, will do something about Nigerians there. Well, um, this is good news because um, today um, I saw Airpeace ready to evacuate Nigerians from Sudan. Now, this is from the office of the CEO. Um, and um, here it's saying that um, APC private airline in Nigeria has disclosed its readiness to evacuate stranded Nigerians in Sudan, not East Africa, for free. If the federal government can get them to a safe and secure airport in any of the neighboring countries, I'm especially happy that a private citizen, you know, would um, take, it upon take up, yeah, is doing this. I mean, Again, sometimes we just see rays of sunshine mm. when Nigerians rise up to the task. I remember that in 2019, he had done the same, Epis had done the same thing in South Africa, you know, when they had um, airlifted um, stranded Nigerians mm -hmm. there yeah. during the um, xylophobic, um, yes. you know, yeah. um, issue. So um, we're praying, our prayers are still with um, the Nigerians in Sudan were praying that they'll be evacuated safely, mm. you know, and um, they'll be back with their families in good time. So well done. Well done. Well done. I must actually say well done to Alain yeah. Oyema because yeah. he's actually been doing a great job evacuating yeah. people in times like yeah. this. He did yeah. that in South Africa. He did that in um, Ukraine when oh, there was that. Yeah, he evacuated students back to Nigeria mm. and then now we see him doing this again in mm. Sudan. Well done. We just really hope that this also extends to FPs delaying their flights. Anyway, so <laughs> my what's in the news is Lagos man stabs neighbor to death over parking space. Uh, men of the Lagos State Police Command have arrested a 41-year-old man, Tululokwe Olo, who allegedly stabbed his 33-year-old neighbor, identified as Pablo, to death. And this happened in somewhere in Badore, Aja, where he had reportedly um, had an altercation on a parking space on their streets. I mean, this is quite a petty issue to ever 
go ahead and do something like why 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 i can imagine how the entire situation might have found out okay so he came back he was looking for where to park he found out somebody else had parked in his space he probably got into some sort of tussle and then what would take get you to that point that's why we need to talk about anger management what would ever get to that point where you mm. stab somebody over such a trivial, trivial thing and it's it's such a it's an interesting coincidence that we're talking about peace, you know, mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I mean, people need to understand that violence is never the answer. answer it's exactly. never. Yeah. We must always find reasons. We must always, first of all, throw the line of peace mm -hmm. to conflict resolution. It's, it's just, I mean, too many things just get crazy in the heat of anger and then you go home regret <laughs> years later you're still feeling regret and mm. so yes peace 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 yeah okay so um we'll go on a quick break and then when we come back we'll continue our conversation for tonight see you after the break <laughs> 